everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really nice size gift bag. My mum said to me the other day, when are you going to make another gift bag? Because you haven't made one for ages. And I thought, you know what, you're right, I haven't. And my mum loves making gift bags. She likes doing my tutorials. So I thought, yep, yeah, I'm going to do one. So this one is loosely inspired by Mary Poppins bag. Um, we watched the new Mary Poppins Returns on the premiere night, so December the 21st, and um, I'm just, yeah, huge Disney fan, huge Mary Poppins fan, and the movie was amazing. So if you haven't gone, you have to go and watch it. It's just so pretty and beautiful, and yes, loved it. But I saw her bag and I thought I wanted something short and dumpy and I think that's kind of what I've got here. It is shorter and thick and it's got that kind of shape to it. But like I said, it's loosely inspired by um, the Mary Poppins bag. Yeah, so hopefully you like this one. It's got a slightly different kind of fastening. So I always try to add something a bit different. So you can see here, you actually fasten it from this. That's, that bow isn't decoration because um, to look at I think you would think it's just the bow is stuck on and maybe it's just by a, a magnetic um, closure or something but you can see here you know, how you would open it so you just pull those through and then you can see inside this really nice roomy gift bag so that will then come back down and then you just feed that through. I've used the gorgeous V&A 2 collection by Trimcraft and it's just such a nice paper really nice that one and I finished it with one of the stickers from the collection this is one of the glittered paper flowers which is gorgeous and then they're just some from my own stash which I thought complemented it quite well there as well and then I've just used this really nice organza ribbon um, to close it so everything you will want is in front here so I've gone ahead and done some bits now I'm using my X cut circle cutter so those are you I know lots of you now have this so we will be using that today but I'll give you the the diameter <laughs> measurement and as long as you've got a, a plate or a side plate or something anything that size you can use you don't need that one I am going to be using this you may be able to get away with it with a normal hole punch but I think I go in deeper into the card stock than a, a normal hand um, hole punch would allow you this is the screw punch by X cut love this again it's another one of my very useful tools that I use but again I'll talk you through ways around that if you don't have it got my glue got my tape got my snips these are my little few left now of my paper flowers but I'm going to be using a couple more of the red those are the glitter ones I took them out of the original packaging but it's not one of the packagings you can reclose so I popped it in this but this glitter is um, it does go everywhere so I needed to keep it contained I've got my ribbon there for this one these are the stickers I'm using I've said a lot of the time I love using stickers as my tag or my sentiment and what I do is I just stick them onto some cardstock and then cut around that and it gives you a really nice you know embellishment it's, it's easier to maybe work with than just sticking that directly down so this is the again the V&A and this is the, the sticker pack and I've used quite a few of them. They have been very handy. So that's my cardstock. And then I am using cream cardstock as my base today. And that's purely because I picked this up from the works the other day for three pound. And it is really, really good. 220 GSM and it's a linen textured cardstock. So if you're in the, in the UK, look online as well if it's not in your store because uh, the works do deliver, have um, you know online service. But it's got a textured linen. But the nice thing is, is you get cream and white. And I just really liked that. That's the paper pack I'm using, the V&A 2. Beautiful, gorgeous, gorgeous papers. And the one I'm using today is the linen textured. So it is just like using fabric. It's hard, you won't be able to see this, but you can see it's really, really soft, really flimsy, but perfect for matting. And again, it's got that kind of Mary Poppins carpet bag kind of feel about it. So that's what I've tried to go for. So you are going to need, I've already done those pieces there. So you need, sorry, usually I jump into my tutorials much quicker, but I just wanted to talk you through all those bits um, in a bit more detail. So you're going to need two pieces of 12 by 12 cardstock for the front and the back of the bag. And along one of the sides, if it's plain cardstock that you're using, then just choose any of the sides. It doesn't matter. And you want to score at four. If you're using directional card, Make sure it's the right way up like this, then turn it and score at four. That score line is the bottom of the gift bag. So you wanna make sure your print is obviously facing the right way. So you need two pieces, both score at four, okay? Then you need two pieces 
these are going to be your sides of your gift bag and these are five by six and you're going to score along the five inch side at half an inch at four and a half then rotate it and score at half an inch then put it back into the original orientation and score at two and a half about three quarters of the way down so I'm scoring at two and a half down to four and all that's going to do is just help us I just show you here just bring in the sides there okay if you want to make this as a fold flat you can if you look back at previous gift bags look at all my fold flat ones you'll be able to work that out um, but I just wanted this one to stay rigid and in its solid form so two pieces of that then to kind of decorate if you're using plain cardstock like myself and you want to decorate it then you need two pieces that are 11 and a half by seven and a half and they're going to decorate on top and then for the handle you need a piece that is 12 by one inch and then I've just got the same paper to mat on top and that is again 12 inches in length and then it's three quarters of an inch width just to give you a nice little border there on both sides. I'm not going to go through what we need for that circle closure part yet, that piece that I fold over because I'll show you that when we get to it because it's going to vary for each one of you. So pop that to one side. Okay so first of all just burnish your main two pieces that you scored at four inches that's your two 12 by 12 pieces and you'll have that one and then with your two nice decorative pieces you just want to layer those or mat them both on top so I've already covered this in double sided tape you can use wet glue I just I just thought I don't know I just thought I'm going to use my double sided tape so I could do with my pokey tool but just go along and get that stuck down okay and then you're just going to stick that down with the nice even same border on all four sides so it should be a quarter of an inch border so just make sure like so like I said this has got such a lovely texture to it you may be able to hear it it just I don't know it's just something it's lovely and you get yeah you get six textured papers I think in that pack and it's just lovely so you want to do that on both pieces so here's one I made earlier again both like so and you can see now one is the front and one is the back and we're going to stick one of the bottom pieces over the other and that creates the front and back of our gift bag so that's that one then um, like I said I've already stuck that down so that's the handle and then what you can do is just you know with your finger and thumb just kind of roll it just so you start to get a nice natural curve so that when we turn it as I always say put your thumbs on the outside turn them in and that's how we will have our handle so that's that piece done and then you just want to do the same so you'll have two pieces like this I've already gone ahead and done my other one and you're just going to burnish all of your outer score lines there and that one there you can just kind of pinch inwards so you just want to create a, like a valley fold there like so at the bottom you will have these little this little square here you're just going to cut that square out like I'm doing like so these are tonic studio by the way if I didn't say and then just take a little wedge off of each of the sides there just so you don't get any of that overhanging when we come to stick it all together like so okay so you will have two pieces that are like that just bring it up there you can see all the folds and everything and like I said that one just pinched inwards like so next we want to do our circle piece so I've got another piece of cardstock here this is kind of a bit of scrap I've taken the bit out there where I've done my um, little tag there so if you're using the circle cutter I've got mine set to seven inches if I just bring it up there you can see six and then there's seven and then eight so it's just that marker in between and then I'm just going to try not to use waste too much of the card so I've got the I've got the um, little cap on at the minute so it's not cutting so I can just check that seems okay I'm just going to take the bottom off here if you haven't seen me use this before there's a blade just underneath this black piece here you stick this down in the middle hold it down and it cuts like a dream <laughs> those of you that have been following for a while now you know how much I love these and the join is always spot on like I said X cut do make really good tools and now if I just pull that away you get a perfect circle so if you have this perfect you will have this size if you don't you will need something that is roughly seven inches in diameter 
okay like I said if it's slightly bigger it doesn't matter if it's slightly smaller it doesn't matter once you see how we put it together it will be fine so now what we want to do is you kind of want to I'm lining it up with my grid here so I've got this line here and I've got this line here and you can see the circle kind of hits on both just want it to be now I know that when I line my ruler up with one of these lines it'll be a straight line so I'm going to use my other stylus and you want to come in two inches so like I said this my mat here these each of these squares is half an inch so I know that's one inch and two inches so this line here down to that line is that's going to be a two inch section there so I'm just going to pop my ruler over the top and line it up with that line and make sure the bottom is lined up and score actually did I do it that far let me just yeah I did no yeah, I am fine okay so and then just score you can put it in your scoreboard if you want but if you've got a grid that's why we have these grids a lot of the time then you will get that and now just lift that up if I just burnish that ooh, that is going to be our little lid or flap to close it so you can see what we've created is this here so that's going to be the same now we need to add these holes and that's where I was saying that's why this screw punch is perfect because it allows you to do a hole punch anywhere on you know whatever paper you know surface area you've got if you've got a hand held one for example well I guess like one of these you're limited to how far in you could go so let me just have a look see that one is oh, do it the right way it's about a quarter of an inch shy okay so it's actually going to punch like here and you can see the holes there but it doesn't matter if it is lower so I guess you can use this go in as far as you can and I mean I'm coming in you won't be able to come in as far if you've got the screw punch we are going to I'm trying to make sure I do this the right way it's two inches in so wherever you start to come down let me just I'm probably not explaining this right hang on a minute let's start Let's just line up this score line with lines here and that way you know your straight because we're working with a circle so it's always a little bit difficult. But now you can see there, right, so I've got my circle straight and then um, let's grab, just to grab a pen there, I'm going to come down until I've got two inches there. Move my ruler like so. Make sure everything's all nicely squared. This is all straight. I've got two inches hit in the side there. Although I could do two inches there, it's not gonna, that's not what I need to do. I need to do this measurement here. Sorry, just want to make sure I get this right. So it's one and a half inches up. So again, make sure that's all straight. One and a half up. So that's there. And then come in to, oh, it was pretty right anyway. There we go. So you want to come up one and a half and then come in two. But it doesn't matter really, you can do anything once you see what I'm doing. I'm just going to keep that lined up, keep everything else all lined up and come in at two on the other side there. There we go. So that's all lined up, that's lined up. I can see there, that's two. I think it should be there actually. The end of this ruler is broke so yeah, I need to come in a little bit more. Fortunately that will all be cut out. There we go, that's better. And then with your screw punch, it does spin around, hold it in place. You just punch it down and it punches a perfect hole. Like so. so now I've got my two nicely positioned holes. So like I said, come up one and a half and come in two. That's where I've done it. And that's if you've got this, obviously you can, but you can come in a bit closer if you want. You can, if you're using, like I said, your normal hole punch, then you will be coming up about an inch because I think that's the pretty much the, the general depth you get on these yeah one inch okay which will still be fine so that's what you need so now we can start putting everything together so I'm going to grab these two pieces and my two sides and we will stick if I remember doing it actually I think this was best to stick down first because this isn't going to be fold flat so what you're going to do you know choose which is your front and your back because you're going to stick this piece here onto the back so this is my back piece and with that score line you want to line it up with the top here and then just make sure that you're also coming in an even amount on each side so what's that two and three quarters and two and three quarters spot on so I'm going to put a very faint little I would usually use a pencil but it's not a hand 
I'm going to put a very faint little pen mark which I know I'm going to cover there and there and then I know that I've got to stick that so I'm just going to grab my wet glue okay so I'm just turn that over and again just follow that score line as long as your score line's all straight with the top there so you need to fold that bit over like so stick that down flip it over and just fold that over Again, just making sure. There we go. Okay, so that's that piece done now, so we don't have to worry about that. Sit this piece over the top, like so. And then fold that over. Put that down and just do a mark where those holes are onto this piece. And then you're going to hole punch again. Same. Now, if you don't... You wouldn't be able to use any of your normal hole punches for this bit, but what you can do is just use your pokey tool and just push through it. Because I always say, if you're going to be using ribbon, you don't end up seeing the actual hole itself anyway. So if it's a little bit rough around the edges, it shouldn't matter. But you can also buy those little sticky, um, it's like stationary holes. I've got them somewhere. It's just little stickers with a hole through that you can actually stick around your hole punched hole <laughs> and it just tidies it up for you. So you can also use those and you can make them yourself as well with your circle dies. So now we're going to stick, I'm going to stick the back one over the front one just so again it's just so it's a bit more finished and more pleasing to the eye. It means from the front you get that continued piece of card whereas if I was to stick the back over the front if you've maybe cut slightly out or slightly over, you would see it. At least that way you can conceal it all. So with the front piece, I'm going to add all my glue or double-sided tape. You can add onto the, the front, okay? Okay, and then very carefully, if you fold this piece up, your back piece, and just kind of line them up together like so, and then you can just fold that piece over like that. You should get a really nice join. And if it is slightly over from the back, it doesn't really matter because, yeah, you're not going to see it. So I'm just going to make sure that's all nicely stuck down. Okay, now what I realised I'd done in the first one and I forgot to do in this one is actually, you, if you do want to be really picky, which is why I've done it and I haven't done it now, is stick your sides on first. So what I do now, do on one of the pieces first and then put it. Basically, you could have this bottom here. I'm now going to stick on there. But you can see it. Again, you probably can't really because of the colour. But if you didn't want to see that, you can just pop it under this one, do you know what I mean? So where we glued that front one, then stick this down and then stick this piece over the top so you don't see that flap or that tab. But you're going to see these ones anyway, so it's not the end of the world. It was just me being a bit particular. But now you just want to get these ones here. I guess maybe if you're using different coloured side pieces to the others, then you would really notice these bits, but... Let's face it, when do you ever look inside a gift bag? So I know I don't. <laughs> so just stick that one there. You're lining up that bottom fold with the side of your base there. You're just sticking it in between. You can see where I've stuck that. And then again with your other piece. Okay, and then we need to start bringing up these and sticking these like so. So I'm just gonna grab this one here and I'm gonna run glue all along this piece. It's when it starts to get big now on my desk, so like so, bring the whole thing up, bring that tab down and then as you bring that around you're just lining up the side so you get a really nice closure like so and if you pop it on its side and then you can just go over that with your finger there just to make sure that's really stuck down. Okay, like so. So you can see now we've already got a really nice side to our gift bag. You just want to do that on all four sides. So again, I'm going to work on the same one on the opposite side. So I'm just going to fold that in. I'm going to make sure I keep it all in frame here. <laughs> and then just stick some glue on this one. And it's up to you when you come to do this piece. You can either do one at a time or both. I'm going to just do one at a time. And again, you just bring that one down. Make sure it's all nice and lined up. So, put it on its side. Okay, and then what you can do with this one is just, you can pull it out enough for you to be able to pop your glue on. 
without maybe you know worrying that you might lift what you've already stuck down so I'm just gonna again pop my glue on there and then that one there you can just stick down okay and then if you just squeeze in your sides this piece will come down and should perfectly marry up with your holes there and then we've got to stick that piece down and decorate the front so let's I'm going to put mine together with the ribbon because then that makes it easier to put your handle on so you want to go in the inside first and thread through your ribbon I did have this as an inch wide ribbon but I've run out so I would have preferred even thicker just because I think it's a large bag and it can you know handle a really big bow but this will do for now and then bring that one down and as you kind of bring it over you're going to thread through underneath this one so and then just bring it in and just pull that ribbon so it's nice and taut and also just kind of arch these in actually that's again forgot to mention that bit there if you just roll and put them on their side and just roll up I'm just rolling up these side bits here and it will just help you can you see now where that's starting to want to come in more whereas that one's still really rigid so just kind of you don't want to actually make any score lines you just want to just bend it in slightly just so it just wants to have more of a curved see now it's got a nicer smoother curve to it and then we can just carry on and thread those bits through like so and then just tie and finish that in a nice bow okay so just tidied that up and now I've got that really pretty bow I love that yeah, it looks so nice and now we can stick our handle down so you just want to add some glue about half an inch at the bottom and just do one at a time or if you've got your strong red tape or your double sided that you like to use turn your box or your bag over and you just want to bring it down half an inch and make sure it's all within that kind of half circle here on the back so I guess you could do this when it's flatter as well if you want to but it is okay to do when it's all made up and just kind of hold it make sure everything's nice and straight you want to make sure that bottom there's straight but just pop my hand in underneath there and I can just pop some pressure on that for a minute and as you're doing it bend that piece over okay bend it to the front so you are almost creating a score line because it will make the handle go straight rather than kind of want to kind of hang over one side because of the shape of the curve on the bag it kind of makes that go that way so if you just do that you'll see now can you see it just kind of has more of a yeah it looks upwards <laughs> so again just make sure that's stuck down and then again, make sure you've got both your cream, if you're doing similar colours to me or plain, facing you. You want the pattern stock to be stuck inside, okay? So again, same amount of glue, about half an inch, and just get that one stuck down. Okay, and there's my handle. How cute does that look? So now I'm just going to finish it off with a little bit of decoration. So I've got this little happy birthday that's going to go down here, along with one of these really pretty sparkly flowers and two of those red ones so let's pop that to one side I think that looks really really nice obviously if you don't want to do that you can have a nice gift tag hanging down but I've got my hot glue on now and I'm going to stick this one down first like so always keep them nice and grouped together so and always work in odd numbers if you can just again makes it a bit more pleasing to the eye I think I picked up these paper ones, the plain red from the range, I want to say. I usually get those kind of things from there, and these are part of the V&A collection. And then this one here, I'm going to add my wet glue just to give it a bit of dimension, as well as stick it down, rather than use foam adhesive. And I'm just going to have it on an angle, really tucked in there, and just slightly stuck, just so it's lifted and got a bit of a shadow to it. But look how much that rose <laughs> glistens. It's so sparkly, I love it. But there you have it, a really nice four by 12 gift bag, which is gonna hold so many things in it. Like I said, these are already ready for their new home and to be filled with gifts. 
I think just looking, I do like that bigger bow. So I think I may end up changing that. I think it's, it's stunning. I love it. It's so pretty, but I do want a thicker bow. So I'll probably end up changing that. But I'm happy with them for now. I cannot get them both in shot. <laughs> there you have it. Da, 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 da. I'd love to know which one you think is your favourite. I think I do prefer this one just because I love that paper. So, but I think, yeah, bigger bow. But there you go. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope I've explained it. I've given you lots of little tips along the way. They are nice and strong as well. You can also, if you don't want to do that style, you could hole punch here and here and put nice ribbon handles. And it also looks nice without handles at all, just like an oversized clutch kind of style. So, you know, lots of many ways to still adapt it to suit your needs. So I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, as always, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.